Hello everybody, uh, we're very fortunate to be here with uh, Yoad Nevo, who is a mix engineer, producer, songwriter, software developer, a man of many talents, and if you watch Sonic Talk at all, uh, which I hope you do, uh, every Wednesday live, uh, you'll know that he's recently moved studios, and we've been fortunate enough while we're in London to come and visit. So we're starting out in your corridor, right? Which yeah. is where all <laughs> the power supplies. A good place to start, yeah. Start with the power supply, so this is... Yeah, that's the power supply of the, the massive power supplies of the Neve desk, quite noisy, and generates a lot yeah, of heat. Yeah, it feels warm out here. Yeah. And of course you've got a lovely, uh, this is what, CS70M? Not being used today, just... No, just I can't fit it in my rack, so it's just here for the moment. Just retired I have time. this actually, this Rhodes keyboard, which is really, it's a Roland, you know that Roland purchased Rhodes at, yeah. some, at some point in the, six, in the 60s, in the 80s. And so I keep this because the sound is shit, but the, the keyboard is just amazing. So when I need like proper Keyboard keyboarding, act. then I just drag it into the... Well, let's let's go in and, and take a look. So we're starting in your... This is, I guess, is this your live room? Yeah. Oh, wow, the acoustic changes so... And the temperature. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. So um, this is... I mean, I know you're, you started off life as a guitarist, didn't you? Mm -hmm. So this is the... These are your axes. Yeah, I have a few and a few amps. Um, at the moment... Well, I love this one. That's a 70, 74 SG, which is amazing. But I'm quite into this one, a Yamaha um, SG2000 from 78. I've heard a lot about I met another guitarist who really swears by this. It, it, so it's good. really dense and the, the high output, isn't it's it? It's a, quite a high gain. It's like a Les Paul, but it sounds more kind of crunchy. It's a one piece mahogany, which is illegal today. Um, it's really, yeah, really amazing guitar. I've heard it. as much. Right, well, maybe we'll come back and have a look at stuff. I mean, obviously, the Pierce de Resistance is your control room, yeah. which is, this is yeah, where all the Yeah, but don't forget comes. all oh, these. Oh, no, okay, no, we, mean, we shouldn't forget this. The yeah. hand toys. Yeah, these are equally important. Do you find you're doing a lot of percussion overdubs with these things? Yeah, right? what, I, what I tend to do is, uh, is I tend to just play the track and play a few bars of each toy in here, there's some more in there, and then just edit it and, and use what I need from it and create some interesting grooves and stuff. And usually <clears throat> when I work with other artists, uh, then we, get, we both get headphones on and we just play stuff and, and grab different things in here and, uh, and just have fun. Oh, you got a nice sombrero as well. Stuff like that. Excellent. Yeah. So, this you said what you've you've mentioned before that you know this took quite a long time to commission this bit. So this is this is in the basement of a building, and have you gone for the full floated sort of yeah yeah architectural it's, uh, construction? Absolutely. It's uh it's the the whole thing is floating. The ceiling is is hung from special rubber brackets and the, the floor is is floating the walls are not touching the ceiling and the ceiling is not touching the walls and everyone lives in happy isolation exactly yeah you wouldn't want to put go to all this trouble and then find the neighbors are ringing up would you well uh, perhaps you could take us in because uh, i'm sure. dying to see this uh, this space now <clears throat> yeah so that's the control room um I like the fact that there's open space, so there's no glass separating the two spaces, and it's like one big kind of uh, playground. Uh, you can easily walk in and out and just grab a guitar and record it or, or anything. Yeah. Um, and, it, and having to wear headphones in here is a small price to pay for that. For that when I record. So, I mean, it seems to me you're a guy who's really... Uh, Focuses on workflow a lot. Of your, Absolutely. Of your team. I mean, Absolutely. you know, we've been speaking about uh, you know the way that this whole thing is set up. I mean, it's it's very designed to kind of the path of least resistance because you just want to get it done. You don't want to be. I mean, there's a lot of IT and stuff going on underneath, but the end result is is, is easy fluent. To use. Yeah, absolutely. And I spend sometimes more time on making things kind of uh, efficient and uh, and easy to use. Sometimes I spend days on on programming a macro or something like that that w it, 
it sometimes takes more more time than it saves. Than it saves. I know, but, but that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah, that's well, the I like thing it. that we do. I like it. I mean, Absolutely. We, we all we can all understand. But I mean, the centerpiece of this is your uh, <clears throat> fantastic Neve. I mean, this is yes, you've got uh, this kind of split the, the bucket split and yeah. So it gives it better ventilation because this thing really runs hot. It's like having a huge radiator in the room. Um, this is basically made out of two desks. Um, one is this section and the other stuff is made out of another desk from LA which used to be in a film studio. So this is all eight way because uh, I use 7.1 and 5.1 so this is very convenient for monitoring. Um, surround and stereo and all that. The two desks have been merged seamlessly. So are you together. using this at all times or are you generally sort of monitoring over a, a sensor? I mean, imagine because you work obviously with waves. I mean, imagine a lot of the stuff is happening perhaps in the more box. so in the box. Yeah? And more and more so uh, as time goes by. Um, I used to obviously mix on my, my, my desk of choice to mix uh, on is, is SSL um, E preferably or OG. Uh, series, but uh, for what I do in the recent years, um, the Neve is is really good because it has amazing preamps, and this one has that's the first Neve to have um, dynamics on the channels, and this compressor is just amazing because you set it for for re I, I use it mainly for recording, and you just set it and forget about it. It just the waveform looks nice and kind of mm. solid and you don't hear much compression at all and it but it, it levels but it, it sounds nice the eq on here is amazing sometimes i use it on recordings not on vocals but on guitars and stuff like that on vocals i rarely use it because i would like to keep the continuity the sound continuity in case i need to revisit a vocal take like six months later or something like that i know that it will be it will sound the same so what you're doing, I mean, you were playing a few mixes before we started filming here. I mean, you, you know, you, your, your, the, the quality of the mixes that comes out here. I mean, you're doing a lot of mix work here mm -hmm. and it, it, it tends to be, it's more of the sort of mainstream sound. It's the mainstream sound that you people seem to come to you for. Yeah. I mean, is that something that you gravitate towards just because you, you, it appeals to you or is it just you found that that's what you seem to be naturally well, gifted for? I don't know. It's, it's a chicken and egg uh, question, but I do like kind of pop sound because it's always at the pinnacle of technology and, and fashion and all that. Mm. So, um, and for that you need to have very accurate monitoring system. I mean, you've got these ATCs, are the SCM 100s or the, what, what are the? The 100, yeah, yeah SCM 100. I, I have to say, I mean, these are, I mean, the, these models have been around for quite some time. Yeah. I remember when I used to work uh, in Crescent Studios in, mm -hmm. uh, in Bath in the like, 90s. That's, they had the, they, uh, they yeah. might have had the 200s because they were two pairs, but they sound what so I like accurate. What I like about them is that you can monitor really quietly, which is what I mainly do. Sometimes I crank it up, but usually, uh, unlike other, other big systems like General X and Quested sometimes that you have to really crank them up in order to, to get this, the sound, you yeah. know, the impact. For that to really but with these ones, you can really, they sound bright and crisp, even at low level. Uh, and I have the Pro uh, I've not heard of these. Yeah, these are really, really cool passive, um, passive monitors driven by a quad power amp. Classic, slow, soft. Yeah. <coughs> sound really good. Yeah. Um, I switched when I switched from NS10, NS10s. I switched to these, but I mainly mainly use the the ATCs at low level. Right. They just sound amazing. So I mean, we'll come back to this because at the center <coughs> section, we've talked to you about this before. You've got this kind of MIDI control. It's kind of great. You've got this sort of massive Neve and then a, a Behringer BCR at the at the hand of it, which is which yeah. is a classic control. But you've modified this as well by the looks of it. Yeah. So and this integrates with your Logic system. But let's let's come back to that. Okay. We'll have a look at the uh, the rest of the room. So. So here there. This are is some... where the synth start. Yeah. Um, the Prophet. Rev 2, which is a great synth. I used to have two, um, the small ones, um, uh, Tetras, yeah. two Tetras linked together, which I love the sound of. 
Uh, this is more convenient because it has all the knobs and stuff and I can use it as a controller. Plus, I use the Omnisphere uh, point 2.6, ah, right. 2.5, so, you, so I, it's a controller and it's, it works amazing. It's, uh, it's and Because this is the one I reviewed, I think, that, uh, yeah. that I managed to pass on to you uh, at the, the yeah, uh, journalist discount. Yeah. Have you used any of my patches? <laughs> oh, I didn't know you had any patches <laughs> in there. I can't remember if they were <laughs> I mean, to, to, to be fair, the, the, the way you store, you save patches is, is not very good because you can't you can only when you press save you can only see the number but you can't see the you name the title of the you, yeah, so it, it kind of so i have to have a scratch like zero zero or zero one to, to like a temporary to that, and right. then move ah, it okay. and it's a bit boring um matrix brute is a really really good sounding synth you know it because you yeah. did a did a review of this yeah, one and a couple of other synth jams as well. That's, that's uh, a I mean, really I noticed these are, these are kind of right close to where you actually sit. Is that because you would reach for these more often than not? Are these the yeah, mainly you're... mainly this one. Uh, the, the, the reason why this one is here is because it has all the matrix um, connections in here. So these will spit out um, um, CV and gate. Uh, all right, so you're patching that into your... And that goes all the way to the other side, which we'll get to in a minute. Right, okay. Uh, so that's like a, um, a massive um, LFO and envelope controller, which is synced to, to Logic. Right, okay. Uh, so that's convenient to have here. Plus, it sounds really good uh, on its own. Uh, and there's an art to it, isn't it? Because it, the, 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 the kind of what you often one does is turn everything up, but actually, there's a lot of uh, cleaner stuff to be had between, at 12 yeah. o'clock. You know, yeah, and absolutely. No, it's, it, it has that, that drive and uh, I really like the sound of it. And it has the classic leather filter. Um, yeah, it's very versatile and, and it it's very great. modern and it's, it, it looks <laughs> good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah. So then we come on to the more sort of uh, the traditional, well, uh, the older stuff, I guess. Mm -hmm. I love this uh, Mini Moog here. It sort of looks like it's got kind of it, it, yeah, it needs to see a dentist. It looks like it's kind of ready for some veneer work, you know, yeah. or, uh, but yeah, beautiful sort of broken teeth keyboard. This looks like a really early one, actually. Do you know the... the, I'm, the I'm not sure, but it has that... Um, has a ribbon. It has a ribbon, which uh, I'm not sure in which model I need to, to find out. I'm sure that there will be some folks who will be able yeah, to... Yeah, tell us in the comments, because yeah. I'm afraid I don't know either. Um, um, Okay, so I mean, you find you're using this a lot. I mean, this is that's my uh, I, well, it's between the Mini Moog and the uh, the SH one 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 is is like my favorite synth for bass, no question about it. The fact that it has a single oscillator because with the Mini Moog you get a really nice sound and it's quite solid and all that, but then you I get. I I'm always get tempted to add another one. Oh, and another one, and the fifth, and this, and, and suddenly you get something it's that sounds a bit more mushy, isn't it? Yeah, like an accordion <laughs> rather than a bass. You know right. what I mean? So it's good for certain things, for like this '80s kind of Madonna basses. But um, but if you want something more solid, this is like it's it's dumb. You know what I mean? It's just a bass thing, and it does it. It's classic SH because there's the, the uh, I think we were looking uh, we were speaking to. Um, uh, ben, uh, yeah, a couple of days, uh, another video that we shot, which hopefully you'll be able to see, which was, uh, he's got the uh, the System 100M keyboard, which is a similar, just basic SH mm -hmm. oscillator, an SH09, of course, you know, they're yeah, just, yeah. There's, yeah. Just there's something really kind of basic, and and it just does, does the job. Um, I have another one, so I can do a spare? stereo. Oh, right, now oh, I can right. do a stereo thing. Even though, to be honest, because it's purely analog and it's a VCO, if you want a stereo effect just on that, you just well. record it twice and then pan it to left and right, and it's you, you get anyway. that sound. Yeah, and so that's what I that's what I tend to do with the with the mini as well. Right. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. And yeah. then then you've got a batch of polysynths here. At Kiwi so, 106. Yeah. So so these are all Kiwi modded. And this one, the, the Super JX, is um, there's another guy who does a mod for it, which adds uh, pulse width modulation and uh, CSEX, proper CSEX mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> and stuff like that. It's, it's really good. Um, yeah, the, the Kiwi mod on this one is, is amazing because it basically it's a whole new 
Juno sound because the envelopes, it, it uses a, a, a quicker processor, so the envelopes are all a lot quicker, so ah, they're much so you more get... snappier. You lose some of that size of those bases, you know, which are part of their magic is that they, they are not too punchy, but just like big. Yeah, but you can get a lot and and you have a separate envelope for the filter. That's right, yeah, they add a second one. And more memories and stuff More like that. memories which, you okay, know, yeah. it's, you, it's... You're talking about write, overwriting stuff. I used to have a patch chart on mine where I just, it was like a print out of a spreadsheet and I'd write in whenever I stored anything because okay. otherwise yeah. I wouldn't know. Yeah, but this one, I mean, the system, the, the Kiwi, the way that the system works, you, it blinks and then it blinks again and then you have to... Yeah, it's a bit arcane. It's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, they're only you working with to, the hardware they've got, I suppose. Yeah, no, it's fine, but I mean, and the thing is that it, it, it will send out controller data as well, as well as the, the, the Poly6, which is more kind of hands-on because it's on rotary knobs. But this here, if you try to, to understand what, where you want to go, so bank A, then this blinks fast, and then this one blinks slow, and it's, it's yeah, like a... It's kind of, yeah, okay, yeah. I got you. But, uh, well, the, we'll show it in a minute, uh, the way I use those things is... I yeah, because all of this, all of this stuff is hooked up, isn't it? I mean, this yeah. is what's interesting. And uh, perhaps we have a look here because I know you've got this kind of Franken, Franken brute. Yeah. <laughs> as well, I don't know if you can step in there. Yeah. So basically, it's a mini brute, um, and the keyboard was taken out, and a, a micro brute was fitted inside. Um, so the way I work with it is that it's it's one synth. So the, the output of this one goes into the auxiliary, into the external of this one. Uh, I don't use the envelope here, so it's just an oscillator. I don't use the envelope or the filter, so it's just purely another, another well, kind of... Well, another five, yeah. Another four oscillators. That, it's a single oscillator, but the... the, the another four waveforms. Uh, four waveforms, so it makes this one... I, I like the sound of that, and it's quite similar to the Matrix. I think the, there's some differences. The Matrix is, is, is beefier, but this one is, is like more... I don't know, brute. Yeah, they, uh, and everybody seems to have a JD800 of a certain age, because yeah. it, it was an era-defining kind of uh, digital polysynth, but also the control. Did you used to use this as your main MIDI controller, like a lot no. of people? No, no, no okay. because I never, I, I, I'm always more fond of using the mouse and, and, and right. keyboard, because then I can store it on the screen, and I always, I've been a big fan of uh, MIDI Quest and um, right, so the the Magic uh, Library. Yeah, there's a librarian as well. Yeah, there? and, and all those. Uh, so the edit buffer is your friend. Yeah, totally, absolutely. Um, and, and there's more. I mean, more polysynths. We've got a Profit VS down here, which is a that's beautiful the VS, thing. Yeah, and, and that's the Chroma Polaris. Chroma Polaris, which is a really really cool synth. Um, it's it's just uh, it's it has a very very unique sound. Maybe it's, we'll get to hear that in a minute. Yeah. But let's carry on on our tour. A couple of the top row. You've got the yeah. uh, 909. Yeah. No 808 though. I'm very disappointed. Yeah. You're missing that color. That's, I, I, that's the only thing I'm really. Uh, yeah. You might. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm sure that one will come up at some point. But yeah. yeah but that, to be honest, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, and you use samples, and they sound kind of okay, if not better, because sometimes you get those ones that are already processed for trap and, and yeah. what you need, you know. And There's uh, a lot of people who know how to sample and produce 808 sounds, yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, but I do love the 303, and, and I, use it, I use it quite often for, for basses, and I, I discovered that the best way of using it is to just have nothing on it whatsoever. No compression, no EQ, nothing. Just as is. It sounds so big in the mix, and oh, it sounds ready. And it's sort of again, though, isn't it? Isn't it like kind of an SH? Also, like not it's quite, got the same not quite. The, S, the SH you need to to use high pass on. You, it, it's too. It's, it's too, too big. big. And this one just sounds right in the mix. Mix ready. Yeah, mix ready. Yeah. <laughs> Right, uh, so um, I guess moving across the... Oh, one thing which I really like oh, yeah. is the Poly, Poly 800 Mark oh, II, and I had, a, I had it mod. modded, yeah. Um, it has a knob for the cutoff, for, and, uh, but the main thing is that it has a data entry, because the nightmare is to change between parameter and, um, ah. and all that. So here, so this... 
And this one is the, I think it's the, the most kind of beefy it's really, I would, not, I would really not have expected to hear that. I mean, because it, it's, it's it always huge. used to be seen as a bit as of a, a toy. Of, yeah. I know, I know. It runs on batteries and it can run on batteries, yeah. uh, but it just sounds massive. And it has this kind of uh, primitive additive, like the like the Korg. Um, I used to have one of those as well. Uh, I forget the name of it. Um, so you can do some primitive additive in the sense like like a, like more like a Hammond right rather than a proper additive but it, it's it, it's something That's that really sounds massive we'll and the filter is really nice and the chorus is really nice and the mod allows you to play with the feedback on the chorus and stuff and get really interesting sounds ah, okay. and and an audio input We've got an evangelist for the, yeah, <laughs> for the poly, I love it. The poly love 800. It. That is an interesting idea. Should we, um, yeah, well, move we to move the other side. To, to so basically, all these, let me, let me just quickly show this patch bay here. That's a 48 uh, point patch bay. The, the first uh, 24 points are all the synth outputs. Right. And the, the bottom row is dedicated for CV and gate. Right, so you just control, got control access uh, to everything. Data. It all goes through the ceiling. There's 48, um, 48 way uh, audio, eight Cat7 network, eight MIDI uh, right. ports, plus the special. Uh, I use the MIDI timepiece. We'll show it here as a, as a MIDI. Um, well, just distribute it everywhere, right? Yeah, MIDI patch bay. So basically, so everything comes out of logic using the Unitor, Unitor, the AMT8, and from there it goes, from there it goes to the MIDI timepiece, um, which is connected via network to the one on the other side. So this is one to eight, and the other unit is nine to 16. Right. So when- That's I'm, ports. That's ports. Yeah. Times, yeah, so, so basically there's 48 MIDI ports times uh, 16 channels, that's quite, Wow, okay. A few. But the way I use them is that everything, let me just uh, switch to a MIDI, uh, MIDI track here. So the way I use it, them is that what, whatever MIDI keyboard I play in the room, it would go to all of them. Ah, so everything's kind of so receiving I, at all times. Yeah, so if I play a MIDI output, I can see, they yeah. all, yeah. And I can do it from here or from wherever, and that will go to the other side. So, because there's no point on, well, I used I to do like channels, channels and stuff and run the whole production together. And then you, it, it's a nightmare to recall the session and you have to save each one. But these days I just do, I get a sound and then I record it into audio. So you record it, so that way you can record the notes and go, uh, oh, let's have it on the back. And they go, actually, and that's already totally. Up or you can mix a few, which uh, which is always nice. I have this this Ted Fletcher mixer, which is a really really good sounding mixer, and you can really drive the the inputs, and and you get a really nice uh, tone. So if I want to mix stuff, you got a before re recording it. Um, yeah, so, so there, uh, there's a lot of <coughs> instruments here, but then obviously we've got. Uh, so that's know, the that, that's more like the audio outboard stuff. Um, the, the, the most, um, I think that the best thing I have in this room it is the tuner, which is on all the time, and you can just tune your guitars uh, or instruments or or mini moogs or whatever. You know, it's yeah, so yeah. handy to have at all times. This is like, I've, I you, think it's the, my... Ma the amount of times I've been uh, reviewing the synth and forgotten to tune oscillators before yeah. I then add something else and just thought... Oh, no, it, be, it became a second before. nature. I, I, I play something and I immediately look here and it, I can see it from wherever right. I am, from there, from and here. So you just sort it out and straight away. it's really, really convenient. That's a good um, tip. Yeah. I have quite an elaborate uh, headphones system. Um, I have two sends that go to the other room. Uh, to the live room, but I have another, and this is the benefit. I, I I thought about it a lot before I decided to to go to to TRS. So the whole studio is connected via TRS. Uh, it's all balanced when when relevant. So all the inputs and outputs 
from right. some of the inputs and outputs from desk which appear here are all balanced. Um, but the good thing about it is that I can, I can use it to send headphone signals on one patch point. Ah, okay, so basically yeah. this one sends uh, the headphones signal to the cupboard, uh, which I, so I have 16 audio lines just running into the cupboard plus uh, four right. MIDI cables, just in case, just I, in case. I need yeah, MIDI <laughs> for my... Um, right, so, so, I mean, so I can run headphones to whoever is sitting on the sofa and if I monitor quietly and someone wants to hear headphones, so it's all patchable and it's really, really convenient to use it that way. Wow, okay, so it's interesting because I mean the amount of co co compatibility and sort of interoperability that you've got here. I mean, have you gone for the networked audio kind of route or are you still very much on the sort of audio tie line path? Uh, no, this is all the, in the analog domain. Right, okay. In the digital domain, we have the SoundGrid Studio Network, which we, if we have time, we'll, yeah. we'll get to that. Um, another thing which, is, which it was a dream of mine, and my assistant at the time, Pino, uh, helped me realize, is the, the, the having all the, all the pedals on Patch Bay, um, plus I have a signal that goes into the live room, where I can plug it into Take several amp stuff, right. amps, and I have a reamp feeding out from output 48 on on the converters, so I right, can so send you, stuff. Right, so you're you're I mean, this, this is the other thing. That's the main, main, main I/O. Is this, yeah. is this like Pro Tools HD? I don't know. That's what the they, HD I/O. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's their their latest. Uh, yeah, it's quite good. It's like industry standard. It's. It's so, you, I mean, because some people go for sort of third party like prisms or whatever. The thing is that this one will interface with the uh, SoundGrid Studio, uh, which um, is supported also by Apogee's new line right, of okay. converters. I so haven't switched yet. I don't know, this is very versatile because it has um, digital uh, connectivity on TDIF plus SPD right. and AES and I mean, but your, I mean your, main your main environment or work environment or composition environment, I guess, I mean, I guess you run Pro Tools here, but Logic is your main sort of... Yeah, I work a lot on, on Pro Tools. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know, it's a, bit, it's a bit strange because my favorite door, I think, is Cubase right. or Nuendo, but I don't use it. Uh, Sound-wise, I think it sounds the best. It's like whenever I mix on it, every now and then, when, whenever there's an, a significant kind of update uh, coming out, I, I will Check mix a, a song or an album or something on Cubase and it just sounds amazing. I guess it's compatibility though, you have to go where everybody else is working. And also no, no, because I receive audio files, I, don't, I never get session files, I, I only insist of, uh, I insist of only well. resist, um, uh, getting stems, uh, so I don't have to worry about compatibility, about instruments, about samples, not loading, about plugins, yeah, yeah. and loading them and buying demos, and you know, I, I, I guess, don't I mean, deal I with all that. I guess that's the point, because here, I mean, you know, judging from what you're setting up, you this is set up to be as efficient as possible. In the same way, you know, it's like you're, as a mix engineer, you know, mixers, it's usually, you've got some impossible deadline, no doubt, you know, and it's just kind of, the I, files I, come in from I deal with, in the with world. huge quantities of, of, of audio files, and I couldn't be trying to open it in Pro Tools and see what's not working and emailing the, the yeah, guy yeah. and saying, can you bounce this or this? No, I just insist of, of receiving only audio files and then I can concentrate on the mix. My assistant uh, will prepare the mix for me. So it's all kind of, we have a very, we have a system. Yeah. And, and it's really important because with the amount of, of, of workflow uh, I, I have to deal with, it, there's, no, there's no other way. Okay. There's no other way. And, and also it makes sense for me to send out stems in the same way. So for remixes and Maximum for- Maximum compatibility. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Okay, so um, let's have a. We we haven't actually looked at all the other instruments that you've got on this rack as well, because you've got you you've got a bunch of modular stuff, which mm -hmm. is always nice to see. Yeah, I'm, I'm a kind of uh, fairly recent into the modular stuff, and to be honest, I didn't have much time to to really um, use it. To be honest, nice. <laughs> I'm see using the it. Pittsburgh stuff. The oscillators sound yeah, really good. Yeah, the oscillators those. are really good. Yeah. Um, I have this MFB um, 
triple oscillator thing, which is effectively a mini Moog, uh, which sounds pretty good. Um, and I have these. Uh, a few of the bits and bobs. Yeah. Oh, it's exactly. nice to see a, 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 one of the Roland. Yeah. They're, they're actually quite cool. It sounds really cool, and you can control it through your phone. Yeah. Uh, using you... using audio, which yeah, is what I realize. It's, kind of neat, it's like isn't it? FSK or something like that. So, and, and then uh, a couple of base station project, uh, uh, Oberheim. What's that? Um, yeah, Matrix, Matrix 6. 6R. That's the um, Super Jupiter, which sounds amazing. This is the... Re oh, the uh, MKS-80, yes. Yeah, that's the... I think it's the Rev4, which is the one that um, self-distorts. So it can't handle its own beefiness, basically. <laughs> it's so too yeah, much for itself. It's too much for itself, yeah. So you, sometimes you have to just trim the, the level down in the patch level, not, right. not at the output. I have the K... Five, which is an amazing additive synth from the 80s. I think it was Ka Kawai's uh, kind of answer to the D50, but it didn't do nearly um, as I had well. A K I had a K1 keyboard, which had some lovely sounds in it. It had some defining stuff. It has stuff. these bells and marimba sounds, yeah. which, are, which are really nice. Matrix, I just love it. It's, uh, it sounds awesome. It's big and uh, it's quite punchy. Um, it's very slow to respond on the CSX. Right, yeah. It's, but that's really, it's almost unusable. I, I have the... There's, there's one guy who does like a firmware update for it, which makes at least makes the, the cutoff and... Ah, so yeah, some, real some That's the thing with a lot really of these old fine. synths. I mean, they're not really designed. Well, it's mainly this. The, control, the, the rest of them and the Polaris. The rest of them are fairly quick to, to respond. So you've got a pretty tasty um, yeah, Waldorf this, rack here as yeah, well. I love, I love this. This one is an amazing sounding synth. It's so lush and uh, and wide. Um, I just love it. This is amazing. To me, it sounds better than the Q, although the Q, I think, is the, is the synth with the most parameters I've ever <laughs> encountered. Is that a good it's thing? Like, um, <laughs> if it sounded good. I mean, it, so it sounds pretty, it, it, it sounds very unique, but I think that this is the, the only true stereo synth in hardware that I know. Oh, okay. I'm not talking about the, the most uh, recent ones. But but like it's a true stereo synth, so you have you can pan the two oscillators separately, and that means that it's I think it's ten voices or sixteen voices. So you get I think yeah, it's sixteen. Big, fat so, so you have to have for it to be st true stereo, you have to have thirty-two envelopes and thirty-two filters. Right. You know, so um, because ev it, the whole signal path is is doubled. Right. Basically. Oh, wow. Okay, that's probably why. So it's, it's really impressive. Expensive. It has a, a really good matrix on it and it has some in the matrix it has some mathematical um possibilities so you can say uh, you, can logic the, and, yeah. you have some some logic you can say the rate of the lfo divided by the whatever of the Just sequencer the thing with those, those long winter nights when there's nothing better to do <laughs> exactly. right <laughs> and you can use the result as a negative wow, source okay. for another parameter it's uh yeah Dance. hours of fun yeah I, and uh got an original access here nord rack and i can't help but be uh yeah so the, this the four that's, that's the 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 world of pulse which is an analog synth uh it's amazing it has three oscillators it's really it's it's one of the best sounding if not the best sounding things since i know uh, it's fully analog, um, which means that if you record again, like the Minimoog, if you record you it track. twice. But um, basically, I have four of them, and you can do a spillover thing, which will let you play a polyphonic, a polyphonic, four voice polyphonic. Maybe I'll have eight at some point. You know, I keep looking on eBay, and uh, if I if I find something, I don't know. I think that four is enough for now. Um, but it's it's really lush and it has that um, stereo thing like uh, the Dave Smith synths where, where each voice plays from a different uh, right, so you get from a, a nice different output sound. so that's really wide 
Yeah. Wow. I mean, there's, there's, I mean, we could go on and on. There's, we've got the yeah, master stuff, the, we've got the, 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 the Rumplers, the, 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 the older ball. stuff. <laughs> yeah, the older stuff. The Casio FZ10M is also an additive synthesizer, and it's a really good sampler. It's a 12-bit sampler. Uh, yeah, the archives. Yeah, well, you've got to have those because you never know when yeah. you're going to have to load a disc up. Okay, so uh, Yard's showing us around the studio. We're going to do another piece on uh, the way that Logic integrates with all of these synthesizers, but I figure that's going to be in another part. So at this point, we should probably say thanks to Yoad for having us and watch the second part. So, Yoad, thank you very much for, uh, for showing us around the studio, Pleasure. and uh, we look forward to the other part of the video. See you next time.